RenderIn is an integrated rendering plugin for SketchUp, able to create high quality photorealistic presentations. RenderIn complements the SketchUp interface with a real time preview window, enriches the properties of existing materials, offers additional environment settings, provides artificial lights, and is able to create multiple presentations of your SketchUp model. Inside SketchUp, the first thing to do is to open the Render In Preview window by choosing the Plugins menu, Render In, Preview. The Render In window refreshes the SketchUp scene and displays it in full radiosity. This photorealistic image within the 3D Preview window is an accurate representation of materials and light behaviors in the set conditions. Consistent with the final rendering, it offers you excellent feedback of the high quality images you'll produce from your 3D model. Continuing our work in SketchUp, the preview automatically refreshes whenever we change the camera position, for example, or zoom in and zoom out of a scene, or move any component in SketchUp. Here is this glass. I grab it and move it to another place. The Render in Preview window follows my steps and highlights the changes instantly. You may notice that shadows are present in the Render in Preview window while this information is missing in SketchUp. The shadows are not activated in the SketchUp window. However, the Render in Preview will display them with the same settings from the SketchUp dialog box. By changing any of the parameters of the date and time, the Render in Preview will also change. Adjusting the north or setting the exact geographical location of the 3D model will also affect the light conditions of the preview window and will automatically refresh the image. The Render in Preview window can also highlight some background information of SketchUp. If we modify the color of the ground in the Styles dialog box of SketchUp, the new color will automatically be shown by the Render in Preview. The same happens for the sky. The changes are highlighted in real time by the preview. SketchUp scenes are considered independent camera positions by RenderIn. Moving from one scene to another means an instant and very fast update of the model in a fully photorealistic environment. Moving on to the next chapter about materials, I'll get closer to some walls and change the finishing on them. New materials should be applied the way you generally proceed in SketchUp. Open the Material Palette, select a material such as this brick, and click on the surface you want to apply it to. This time the preview won't be refreshed automatically. We need to ask RenderIn to refresh the window by clicking on this Regenerate button in the lower left hand corner of the preview window. This step should be done whenever we change the 3D geometry itself or apply a new material to a surface. RenderIn completes the material settings with additional parameters. To access them, we need to open the RenderIn tool palette by opening the Plugins menu, RenderIn, and Tools. The icons in the upper side of the palette open tabs with different groups of parameters. The first icon, the bucket, belongs to materials and the palette highlights the parameters of what is selected. We can select different materials with the picker and start to work with the parameters such as reflection or shininess. These changes will instantly be seen in the Render in Preview window. Materials can be set to transparent with the opacity slider and if they are, the refraction turns active and we can set it to different values. Curved surfaces can be smoothed with the Smoothness slider, and we can also add Bump effect. The bump can be generated either by using the initial texture map, I get closer to the wall to see the effects better, and if we are not satisfied, we can add an extra bump map by unchecking this checkbox and selecting a more effective bump map, a grayscale or black and white image. Changing the settings, the grout between the bricks will be deepened or lifted depending on the direction we are dragging the slider in the toolbar.
The next topic is about environment. We've already seen how Renderin uses some of the SketchUp settings. In addition to that, it also offers its own toolset for an even better result. To switch to the Renderin settings about environment, we need to activate the Renderin tools by checking the background environment checkbox. And then, we have two different possibilities. The first one is to use a 2D image for background. By checking this box, I can immediately browse my hard drive for a nice JPEG or BMP image, or an average image even taken with my digital camera. The 2D image will resize the preview window and will be applied for every scene. The second option is to set a physical sky for my scene. By checking the infinite ground and 3D sky checkbox, I have access to four cloud types through the sliders below. The sliders set the quantity of clouds in the sky, which you can see increasing or decreasing right in the preview window. We can create our own mixture of cirrus, stratus, cumulus, and cirrocumulus clouds. The clouds will be distributed in a very realistic manner on the entire sky dome of 360 degrees. Therefore, this excellent background can be used not only for still image renderings, but for animated presentations as well. To complete this physical sky, we can select among four different finishings for the infinite ground to complete the model. It can be a simple color like this. This time, the changes will appear only in the render and preview. The SketchUp model won't be affected. Other finishings for this ground can be composed of different texture maps, such as sand or water. I just turn the camera around to show you how realistic this surface is in the preview window. It's a very nice, high-quality material with great reflections and transparencies. In the meantime, I notice that I have to lift this infinite ground just a little bit. I can do that by changing its altitude. Just getting back to the previous camera position, there is a fourth option for this ground, a texture simulating grass. These are the render and settings completing the environment in a very realistic manner. Now it's time to talk about lights. I open the tab with lights in the render and toolbar and select an interior scene which is still completely dark. So I need to turn on some lights and light this room. Any component can function as a light. I selected this lamp component in SketchUp and in the render and toolbar I turn it on. For lights we can adjust the power or change the color. Every modification will instantly appear in the preview window. This component was converted into a bulb for which we cannot edit the angle. That's the reason why the angle slider is gray. Lamps can be added to shadow casting with one click and this shadow can be smoothed. We have a second component in our scene which can be turned on and here it is. Before activating it as a lamp, let me go closer to see what is really emitting from such a component. Inside the lamp you see a little plan that was transformed into a light source with the render in lights create lights command. Plans will act as spotlights while shapes will turn into bulbs with the same command. I turn it on in the toolbar so I can start to set its parameters. Just move the camera back to its initial position for better visibility and now we can clearly see how the angle changes for this spot by assigning different values to it. We have two different light sources in the scene already, and there's still one more to show. We can transform this sign into a neon light, but how? The sign wasn't saved as a component. However, it's still possible. To do that, we have to switch back to the Materials tab in the toolbar of RenderIn and in SketchUp. Select the bucket and take the picker to select the material of this sign. The settings appear highlighted in the render and toolbar as well. Among the parameters you will find one called Light Emitter. This can transform any material composed of simple colors into a neon surface emitting light. The same slider will adjust the power of the emission.
Our interior is now ready. We may need to make a last adjustment of the light sources, perhaps change the power or other parameter to get a nice scene lit by three different light sources offered by RenderIn, bulb, spotlight, and neon light. After the scenes were set, we are ready to produce images and presentations out of them. However, we still have the possibility to continue with the settings in Artlantis. Given that RenderIn is powered by Artlantis, it is able to transfer all the existing settings regarding materials, environment, lights, or camera positions right into Artlantis. Just choose the export ATL command, open the resulting ATL file in Artlantis, and enhance your presentations in this powerful standalone renderer. In SketchUp, and continuing with Render In, we will set the final rendering options for a still image. The rendering options are available at the upper side of the 3D preview window and are composed of two sliders, ISO and shutter speed. These terms are already well known from photography. The ISO sets the sensitivity of the camera, while the shutter speed represents the time during which the shutter stays exposed to light. You can adjust the values either by dragging the sliders or by introducing numerical values. The result can be always controlled in the preview window. As soon as we are ready, we can launch the calculation by clicking on the render button in the lower right hand corner of the preview. The dialog asks us for a name and location of the future rendering, and we also need to choose an output format for it. We can choose from the most common image formats such as JPEG, BMP, PNG, and TGA. The scene can also be calculated in Photoshop format, giving access to basic layering. This is the option to choose whenever you wish to make further adjustments in this photo editor. The last format belongs to a different presentation mode. It's called Panoramas. Now we are calculating a still image, so I will choose the JPG format and start the calculation. The process is automatically launched and you can follow it in the preview window. It is a three-step calculation done in a very short time thanks to the speed of Artlantis, one of the fastest rendering applications available on the market today. While the image is being calculated, I would like to show you the result in the event you choose the panorama format. This will be a folder containing an HTML file, another folder with the assets belonging to the HTML, and a third folder containing a flash player. To launch it, just double click on the HTML file, which will automatically open a browser, any browser, and we can start the navigation. Panoramas are composed of nodes distributed in the 3D model. A node is a still camera position around which we can turn with the mouse and look around in 360 degrees. As I navigate around this node, we can see the sky dome set with those beautiful clouds. They were distributed in a natural way, creating a very realistic physical sky. While navigating, some links may appear and they will lead us to another camera position. Once there, we can continue to navigate the same as before. Nodes can also be chosen from the drawer below. Each scene of our SketchUp file was converted into such nodes, in fact. This is how we can control their position. The Panorama folder contains everything we need to start the navigation. It can easily be shared by sending it in an email or putting it on a server. It can also be added to your website. Panoramas can easily be viewed in any browser supporting flash technology. To show such a panorama on an iPhone or iPad, download the iVisit 3D app onto your mobile device and convert the panorama folder with iVisit Builder into a format this app can read. Now back to SketchUp. The still image calculation is finished. It's worth comparing the final render with the quality of the preview window. You will notice a surprising similarity between the two. Yes, as we said before, 
The preview image is consistent with the final rendering and you can securely rely on what you see in Renderin's preview window. Preparing a rendering is fun with such excellent and instant feedback. Check out the website and see what other users have done using Renderin. Below the Community tab, you will find the image gallery filled with fantastic examples of Renderin at work. You may also want to see nice panoramas, right? Continue along to the iVisit 3D gallery and navigate inside beautifully rendered 3D models. Browse the entire site, join the forums, and share your experience. Have fun and enjoy your work with Renderin.